Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Today on Ask the Messengers, we celebrate recovery. The 17th annual Celebrate Recovery Walk and Rally was held on September 9th on Belle Isle in Detroit, and the Ask the Messengers camera was rolling. Our street reporter, LaShawn Battle, will talk with Lauren Stovall of the National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependency, Greater Detroit area, about the walk and rally. She will talk with the keynote speaker, Tony Hoffman, the professional BMX elite competitor and recovering addict who travels the country helping others in recovery. Plus, we will share some real stories from real people in recovery who attended the celebration. It just went out of control once I met Vicodin in the pharmaceutical industry. Really, they are the uh, drug dealers of the streets these days. Uh, family problem back when I was a teenager. You know, trying to fit in, trying to hide the pain, trying to escape from reality. It's all here on this episode of Ask the Messengers. And now, here's LaShawn with Lauren Stovall, whose organization helped to organize the walk and rally. This event is put on by a very small committee um, of dedicated people, including myself, uh, within uh, Detroit and Wayne uh, County. Um, who have put, been putting this on for 17 years now. Um, today is the 17th year of this Celebrate Recovery Walk and Rally. And uh, it was created to do just that, to celebrate recovery. September is recognized as the month of recovery. And so we've historically been doing this uh, every September around this time. Um, we've been in Lansing and done it. We typically do uh, appreciate to do it right here uh, in Detroit at Belle Isle, um, just due to the great history here and the scenery here and um, the efficiency to get people here. And so uh, today the weather held out. It's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's hundreds of people here uh, with their families. Um, and it's a day of fellowship and fun uh, to celebrate. As the messengers found out that the attendees were celebrating recovery from many different types of addiction. My drug of choice was prescription painkillers, heroin, methamphetamine, and crack cocaine. Alcohol and crack. My drug of choice was Xanax and barbiturates. My drug of choice for the last 20 years has been alcohol. My drug of choice was more. By that I mean more whatever you had but primarily alcohol, marijuana, and cocaine. My drug of choice was whatever that was available at that time. That went from anything from alcohol starting out to smoking weed, to tooting cocaine, to crack, uh, and then what they call chase the dragon, putting heroin on with it. So whatever they was doing, I was doing. Anything that would make me feel good, that was my drug of choice at that time. My drug of choice was heroin, and crack. I did both, but preferably heroin. My drug of choice was heroin. Mine was more of whatever I could get, primarily opiates, you know, because that's what took me where I wanted to be. My drug of choice would be heroin. My drug of choice would be heroin, crack cocaine. Alcohol, beer. These are persons in recovery. Organizations are here, such as Salvation Army, such as Mariners Inn, such as Share, uh, such as the National Council of Alcohol uh, and Drug Dependency, um, Detroit Recovery Project, Detroit Rescue Missions Ministry. And so many organizations throughout the community are here. There are many reasons to celebrate recovery, and being accepted back into one's own family is number one. Substance use affected my relationship with my family in a pretty dramatic way. Um, they, they gave up on me to the point that they kicked me out of the house and I didn't speak to them for many years. Uh, luckily with recovery, uh, I've mended that relationship, but I didn't speak to them for many, many years. I used to be the one that came over their house, they would tell me to stand by the door and clap your hands. Do you know how hard it is to try to pick something up when you're clapping your hands? If I stopped clapping my hands, they would come running to see what I had. Today, I have keys to their house. They call me now and ask me, what do you think about this? What do I think about that? And I, I, I remember back, I said, just a few 24 hours ago, you didn't care or didn't even worry. Now, I've earned back what I so freely gave away, the respect and trust. And that came from putting in hard work, 
day after day after day being consistent not just talking to talk but walking the walk in this recovery process I now have a great relationship with my family I talk with them they're very supportive they're very encouraged and excited for the, the new life that my family will have because I'm going to be part of it it's going to take away the drama and we're, we're all very excited for, our, for the future. I do have my family support now. It took a long time for me to get it back. But um, they support me now and they, when I don't go to meetings, they, they ask me, you know, do, don't you need to go to a meeting or you need to get to a meeting. They'll let me know, you know, when I'm not doing so good. And, and I do have their support. They're back in my life now. I, I'm a better brother, sister, or bro better brother to my sisters, and 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 better son to my mom and dad, and a better friend today. Well, I didn't have a family when I got to that point. My family had moved away, and I was here by myself. One of the things that ran them away was uh, the way I was living, and uh, they were leaving anyway. But I kind of expedited it for them and it destroyed my relationship with my children but uh, that's been repaired since I've been in recovery thank God for that my mom noticed that we stopped the drinking and she's starting to let us have more and more um, time with my son more and more um, visits and you know it's getting better in that way um, we got court just in a few months to see if he can come home um, and I'm praying you know with us just doing everything we got to do right that he'll come home where he belongs I believe we have no support. Yeah, they're sitting there, they're helping us out with my son. You know, I can't thank God for that, you know. But I mean, I want people to realize, you know, my family to realize that support is letting us know that you're here for us. You understand what we're going through, that this is a disease. It's not just us going on the street like, hey, you know, let me just get a bag just to get high. No, this is seriously, it is, it, it's affecting my whole entire life. Me out of all my family, my, like my family members, my sisters, my brothers, would never thought that I'd be doing heroin. But it has, it's taken over my whole body. And we have no support. If we had support, they'd be trying to help us, look out for us, talk to us, pick up the phone. We need to talk to them, you know. Any type of way of support they can, but now it's just, there's no trust whatsoever. It hardly had anything before, but now it's worse. People need to know that if you, if you have people who are struggling out there with this problem, you need to give them support because if you don't, they have nothing and pretty much we fail without them. If it wasn't for him, I'd have nobody, you know, I, literally nobody. And I don't feel like we have any type of support system. My support system is this organization. This is my support system. When I say it's going to take away the drama, what I mean is it was it was difficult living with an addict. You didn't know, you know, it's the lying and the stealing and and everything that goes along with being an addict. Um, having to pick me up when I couldn't walk and, and, and all the, the things that go along with it. And they know that that's not gonna be their mom anymore. They're gonna be able to come in and they don't have to sit in the driveway afraid and, and t you know, of what they're gonna walk in on. Is mom gonna be high? Is, is she gonna be passed out? They know mom's going to be right there at the door, welcome in, you know, with a big hug. I'm going to have dinner for, waiting for them. And they're excited. I'm excited. I'm going to have my family back. My kids are older now, but they're right there for me, and, and we're thrilled that I've made this decision, and I'm going to be sticking with it. And because I do have, I have support here in recovery. And and I have the Lord, and that's, I'm, I'm excited. My family doesn't trust me anymore. They won't let me sleep in their basement. They won't let me come, uh, you know, to family reunions without keeping a, an eye on me. And I never stole from them. It's just the stigma of the, of the addiction itself. There's such a huge stigma. Oh, if you're an addict, you're going to steal from me. If you're an addict, you're going to do this to me. And, and it's not for everyone. You know, not everybody's like that. Not everybody's cut like that. But it's what they've heard, and that's what they believe. The mission of this is to show um, that recovery can be celebrated uh, and that people can and do 
recover um, and to really get away from the stigma that's associated uh, with addiction um, and really to celebrate the gains um, that are happening um, with recovery. And so uh, today it's about a celebration and it's about bringing awareness uh, that people do recover. Uh, I started off with marijuana, then I went to alcohol, then to pills, uh, and then, then it just went out of control once I met Vicodin, the pharmaceutical industry. Really, they are the uh, drug dealers of the streets these days. They get you hooked on it and then, uh, and then you move to the city and uh, you get your drugs the best way you can down there and, and then it becomes a cycle and, and your, your brain chemicals change and, and then it really does become a disease. It, uh, it becomes more important than getting food in the morning. Uh, getting your fix becomes more important than feeding your body and it, it's disgusting to say the least. And a lot of people aren't understanding that addiction is a disease um, and many people want to stop. But again, it's a disease um, that there is is help for uh, and so a lot of people in recovery they are seeking help um, they're seeking treatment to um, to treat this disease of addiction um, and, and so the stigma is that people don't recover and well we see hundreds of people here who are in long-term recovery yeah I'm a person in long-term recovery what that means is I haven't used drugs or alcohol October the 17th it'll be 14 years I too am a person in long-term recovery and uh, like she was saying I haven't used drugs or any mood of mind altering substances illegally you know I've used doctors prescribed for operations and so forth. I've been sober for ten and a half years. As of right now we have a year clean and we're trying the hardest that we can to stay clean and let me it is a struggle. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm in the uh, Sheer House at uh, West Grand Boulevard. You know, that's what I represent. You know, my uh, my counselor, you know, Mr. Moore, and everything. They, you know, they show me the light, show me a lot. You know, it's a better life without having drugs or alcohol in my life. As the Messengers continues from the 17th annual Celebrate Recovery Walk and Rally after this short break. Looking for a rewarding career in healthcare? Advantage Living Center has partnered with Odyssey Educational Center. Upon completion of your CNA program, immediate employment is available. AMG has homes on the east side and west side of Michigan, as far as Armado and Battle Creek. So come be a part of our team. Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Become a certified nurse and assistant by taking our three-week program or enroll to become a hemodialysis technician in our 10-week program. Your new career begins at Odyssey. Looking for a rewarding career in healthcare? Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Become a certified nurse and assistant by taking our three week program or enroll to become a hemodialysis technician in our 10 week program. We offer day and evening classes, free childcare, ages six weeks to five years old, payment plans and financial aid available. Plus, we are a Michigan Works affiliate. Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Area code 313 341 7512. Your new career begins at Odyssey. Papillon Taylor offers tuxedo rentals, same day prom wedding dresses, and mink leather alterations. Papillon Taylor also provides organic dry cleaning and a convenient drive through pickup. Located on Southfield between 9 and 10 Mile Road, click Audio on papillontaylor.com or call 248 557 six six nine nine hi i'm ashley greaser the office manager at premier supportive services here at premier we offer a variety of services that include residential service 24-hour residential attended care semi-independent as well as many other services so if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2, or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury. We're restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. 
having a truly bad day, or hitting the so-called rock bottom has led many addicted persons to seek recovery, as LaShawn Battle finds out on this day of celebration. The worst day of using for me was the first night that I was homeless on the street. I would basically lost everything, so there was no more family, there was no more friends, it was just me and my substance use, and heroin was the, the backbone of my use, and so uh, that was by far the worst night because I think I realized at that time that I was going to die soon. There was, I couldn't figure out how to get off. I didn't. I was trapped and just depressed and lonely. And I mean, I slept at the high school I graduated from that first night, and I was 400 yards from my family's house, and they wouldn't even help me because they'd just given up on me. So that was by far the toughest night for sure. I had a spiritual experience on January 21st, 2007, and as a result of that spiritual experience, um, I found direction in my life, I found purpose in my life, and I found peace in all of the things that I experienced growing up as a child, as a teenager. Some of the things I experienced as an early adult, I learned that those things all happened for a specific purpose to make me who I was, to carry that message forward to those that were suffering from addiction myself and not only them but also kids that were not struggling and to try and keep them on the right path by creating my nonprofit organization that helps steer them in the right direction. Waking up the next morning with the hangovers, not having no money to pay no bills, trying to skip and scrimp and save to try to find out how I'm going to pay my phone bill or getting stuff for my kids for them in the school or you no know, Christmas presents, birthday presents. The worst day in my addiction was the day that I died. I, I died three times. Um, I actually uh, had to be revived by my son. He had to pull me out of the bathtub, uh, dead, and use CPR on me twice until the paramedics came and, and they had to revive me as well. That is my worst day in my addiction. My worst day of using probably had to have been the year after I relapsed when I was in recovery. Um, I just had a lot of things going on where it, it wasn't just like one big event, it just turned into a daily ritual and to me that's the worst. I thought I could handle it and I couldn't. About 16 and a half years ago, I shot a shotgun off past my dad and killed the family dog. I went to the hospital, state hospital, for uh, about three and a half years. I was found not guilty by reason of insanity and uh, I was charged with assault with intent to murder and felonious firearm and that was really my bottom because when I was in the hospital I kind of wondered how I got there and once once I accepted the fact that the drugs and alcohol in me was the problem then I was able to move forward and get on with my life by changing my behavior and changing everything like I've heard today. When I found myself waking up in a car not knowing how I got there and in the middle of the winter time and had to realize the thing I could have froze to death. It's the the worst thing it's done is taken you know over me and my life and to the point where I had my kid taken away from it. You know, you know what I mean. I mean, I don't even know how to explain it. This drug completely takes over your body. It literally took took me to like go to rehab and have CPS come into my life to realize that this thing was destroying me versus taking care of my kid every day. It's affected me more than you could possibly imagine. It's, it's the devil. Your with your family. It affected the relationship with my family in many, many ways. My mom doesn't trust me anymore. My own, my own flesh and blood looks at me like the black sheep. Uh, me and her, we've been to, through hell and back together. Um, every time we get dirty together, we get dirty together. Every time we get clean together, we get clean together. And thank God we've been clean together for almost a year now. I am an advocate for people in long-term recovery. So I'm a preventionist. I go throughout the community um, and I facilitate groups to parents, to adults, to children, to youth um, about how to prevent substance abuse. So if a person wanted to participate in this event, what do they need to do? Um, they would need to contact um, my, myself, NCADD, or our website, uh, michigancelebraterecovery.com.
So I started the Free Will Project, my nonprofit organization in 2012 called the Free Will Project. Our goal is to develop healthy life choices in youth through action sports. Those action sports are skateboards and BMX bikes. We have after school programs and we have summer camps. The thing that make the organization so unique is that we provide the experience to the kids. So they don't have to have their own bike, they don't have to have their own skateboard. We give them that to use during our program and then when they graduate the program, then they earn their own equipment free of charge. $500 bikes, $150 skateboards, backpacks, and basically we're just trying to enable these kids that may not have an opportunity to be a part of something that keeps them out of trouble, to be a part of it. And how do they get in contact with you? Right now the organization is only in Fresno, California. We're always looking for ways to expand in other places. So maybe you're listening to this and you're like, hey, we want to try and check out more about our, our uh, the Free Will Project. But you can locate us online at freewheelproject.org. Free Will is F-R-E-E-W-H-E-E-L. Not free will like you would think, like uh, the spiritual kind, but it's a duality thing. But freewillproject.org. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram as well as uh, our own webpage and reach out to us. We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messengers. Papillon Taylor offers tuxedo rentals, same-day prom wedding dresses, and mink leather alterations. Papillon Taylor also provides organic dry cleaning and a convenient drive through pickup. Located on Southfield between 9 and 10 Mile Road, Click Audio on TapionTaylor.com or call 248-557-6699. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the office manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2, or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. Looking for a rewarding career in healthcare? Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Become a certified nurse and assistant by taking our three week program or enroll to become a hemodialysis technician in our 10 week program. We offer day and evening classes, free childcare, ages six weeks to five years old. Payment plans and financial aid available. Plus, we are a Michigan Works affiliate. Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Area code 313 341 7512. Your new career begins at Odyssey. And now, here's some advice from people who are in recovery. If I could say one thing to somebody, i say you got to believe in yourself. But if you can't believe in yourself in the moment, you got to believe in the one person that does believe in you that says, listen to what I'm saying, I can help you. Sometimes we got to give that belief to somebody else that sees what we can't see until we gain that inner strength to see that we can believe in ourselves too. Do you have a relationship with your family now? My relationship with my family now is wonderful. I. I'm, I'm very fortunate to still have mom and dad behind me. It took a long time to get their trust again. But uh, yes, it's mom and dad, brother, everybody's accepting me back into the family. Just take it one day at a time. You know, life is better, sober and clean. You can, uh, you can have, a, uh, have a better life without having drugs and alcohol in your life. If I could send any message to anyone, you're not alone. Uh, this is a disease uh, and it needs to be treated as such. And I've learned a lot through the programs that, you know, you didn't choose the drug, it chose you. And all you can do is rely on your peers and your friends. And you're probably not gonna get along with your family at first, but maybe that'll come back around. But you gotta keep on trying. We're all sick. I would just say, just ask God for help. You know, pray to him, um, ask, ask your family to, do what they can to help you, 
get a get to meetings uh, on a frequent basis to 10 90 meetings in 90 days get a sponsor home group and a basic tax or a big book and uh, go to as many meetings as you can uh, if you need to go to treatment do that and uh, just uh, continue to try and make forward progress no matter how small it may seem. If I can say something to help somebody out there keep from using again, I would tell them to just think back to the positive things that you used to do and how your life has changed and how it's been altered from one extreme to the other. You know, and everything in between because we really do hurt the ones that love us the most. You know, we don't realize it until something really bad happens. Then we come to a reality I, that could have been me. So instead of thinking that could have been you, stop it before you get started. I tell them, get yourself a chance, get yourself a break. You know, it's help out here. We got uh, Narcotics Anonymous, we got all these recovery venues going on. It can be done. If a, if, if, a, if a person like me, and they call me the worst of the worst, can get clean, help is out here and it's available. Hell, I'm in the helping professional. I help. Put it down. Don't pick up the first one and give yourself a break and get these resources that's available to you because pretty soon it ain't going to be none. What I would say to people is, like she was saying, basically, don't pick up the first one if you haven't already. If you have, go get some help. It's available, you know. Uh, if an addict like me can do this, anybody can, you know. If I could help something, if I could say anything to help anyone out there in the world, don't start drinking, get all the information you can about drug use and abuse, and most of all, be abstinent and give God the glory and pray and ask God to just keep you from it or to help you not start in the first place. Look at, look around, look Look at how many people are dying, loved ones, even if they're not your loved ones. People that have died, what this generation is turning into, just what us as a whole have become and how many deaths that this has really taken down. Like what's going on with everybody to take one good look at and think, is that where you want to be? Because one day if you do that and you try that, you may not wake up one day, you'll be just like the next person. Um, if I could say one thing to somebody to not use drugs, uh, I would tell them, you know, you're fine now. You don't, you don't need to change your brain chemicals because that's all it's going to do is it's going to change your brain chemicals and you're going to be dependent on a chemical for the rest of your life. I remember a time where I didn't need chemicals and it was such a happy time in my life. And now that I feel like I'm dependent on chemicals, it's such a sad, sad time in my life. I have to go to a methadone clinic seven days a week. Hopefully with God's will and God's strength, I'll be able to get off it one day. But it's nothing you want to deal with. Just, just say no. For the love of Christ, say no. Thank you for watching this episode of Ask the Messengers. More episodes of Ask the Messengers can be found at Ask the Messengers on YouTube or go to our Facebook page or to our website, askthemessengers.com.